Okay, so the other day I posted a lesson video over on my main channel with my friend Daniel Seraph, And in that video, I'm playing this guitar. And every single time I play this guitar in a video or an Instagram post or anything, I always get literally dozens of comments, people asking what this guitar is. Who makes it? Is it a Gibson? Is it a Les Paul? People are always really, really curious about this guitar. So I figured I'd make a video today over here on the second channel telling you about this guitar and uh, why I love it so much. By the way, if you're new here, this is my second channel. This is a place where we go a little bit deeper into subjects uh, that might not fit over on the main channel. So if you're interested in a lot of this stuff, please subscribe down below. And also a quick plug for my ebook, the Fretboard Fundamentals ebook. It's a guitar theory focused ebook. You can get it for free via the link in the description. So this is a Wide Sky P125C. And these guitars are made in Hawaii by a man named Patch Rubin. Now, originally Patch was building guitars based out of Taos, New Mexico, and actually this guitar was built in Taos. And I got it in 2020 or 2021. Now I should point out this video is not sponsored by Wide Sky or anybody else. I'm not being paid for this video. Patch never asked me to make a video. He did, however, build this guitar for me, uh, which I'm incredibly grateful for. It's a very, very kind gift. But Patch doesn't know that I'm making this video or, or anything like that. This is literally just so I can tell you guys about this guitar. Now, like many people who know about the Wide Sky brand, I was first turned on to these by Gary Clark Jr. Actually, back in 2019, I was playing for an artist named Jesse Wilson, and we did a run of shows opening for Gary. During his shows, he was primarily playing the Wide Sky, and I remember seeing Gary's backstage at the first show, and that was the first time I had seen one up close, and I immediately fell in love with it because... As you can see, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous guitar. Now, later that year, uh, the Boutique Guitar Showcase came through Atlanta. Patch had built a guitar that was traveling with the Boutique Guitar Showcase, and uh, I went and got to play it. In fact, I made a video featuring it a few years ago uh, over on the main channel that you can check out. And immediately when I played that one, I was struck by a couple of things. One, how comfortable the body felt. It's a small guitar. Many people think it looks like a Les Paul or is a Les Paul. It's not. It's a little bit smaller than a Les Paul. In fact, Chris, hand me the, the Les Paul there. So it's Les Paul inspired, but it is not exactly a Les Paul shape. A Les Paul is actually a little bit bigger than this guitar, especially up near the cutaway and where the switch is. So you can see it does look like a Les Paul, but it is not completely a clone or a copy of a Les Paul. Yeah, it's also quite a bit thinner than a Les Paul. In fact, here, let me... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to get okay. you to do. So you can see it's also quite a bit thinner than your traditional Les Paul. And that was the first thing I noticed when I actually got my hands on one at Boutique Guitar Showcase was how comfortable it felt to play. Now there's not any kind of lacquer finish on this and that was one of the first things I really connected with this guitar was the neck feel. It's this oil rubbed finish. I don't know exactly what patch is using on this but it's incredibly comfortable. It's just the mahogany uh, with no real grain filler so you're getting the texture of the mahogany and a really really comfortable sort of uh, inviting neck to play. So the pickups that Patch is using are wound by Curtis Novak and I opted for the P90 and the humbucker configuration. You can go either way, full P90, full humbucker, but this is something that I didn't have in any of my other guitars and I think this is a really great combination. The two complement each other really, really well and these Curtis Novaks are actually pretty dark sounding. Uh, which when you read about this guitar on Wide Sky's website, he talks about wanting the guitar to kind of have a darker, woolier sound. Uh, and it definitely does. In fact, when I first got the guitar, I had to kind of adjust the pickups height to get them balanced. The neck was way hotter than the bridge was. But once I got that dialed in, the guitar just came alive. <laughs>
So the humbucker has like the brightness and articulation, but it's not nearly as bright as my PAFs in my Les Paul or my 335. And I actually kind of like that. This guitar has a darker, woolier, punchier sound and character than my Les Paul does. And that's one thing people like to compare it to because it does look like a Les Paul. It's got mahogany and maple construction like a Les Paul, but it doesn't sound or feel exactly like a Les Paul when you're playing it. My Les Paul, my R9 is a little hotter, a little punchier. This guitar is a little more subdued. It's darker, it's warmer sounding, especially on the neck pickup. And you can coil split the bridge, uh, which sounds like this. It's not something I ever do. I don't like coil split or coil tapped humbuckers. So I just leave it in humbucker mode. But after getting this guitar and kind of learning what its voice sounded like and what it was good at, uh, I took it to Germany to record on an album called Still the Mess I Was by an artist named Roofman. And I took two guitars on that session. I took my Wide Sky and then I took my Novo Solus, which is a single pickup, basically kind of an Esquire. Uh, it's got a single Telecaster pickup in the bridge. And those two guitars got me through the entire album and I'm really, really happy with how it came out. There's a song called Fly Off, Fall Down, Come Back that we recorded live where I used the Wide Sky to do this sort of like big Pink Floyd fuzz inspired solo and it was just perfect for that. Like the sort of mid to low output humbucker with the darker sounds worked incredibly well with the fuzz that I was using at the time. And I think that's kind of the best example that I have of the character of this guitar. It wants to be played loud. It takes fuzz and distortion incredibly well, but the semi-hollow nature of it gives it a little less immediate tone and a little bit less immediate response than your solid body Les Paul, for example. It's a little spongier, like the notes don't jump out of the guitar as fast as they do on a Les Paul or another solid body. <laughs> saying holds true with the two guitars in my hands. This is much more immediate, like the notes are jumping out of this guitar much faster, it feels like. It's not as resonant and it's not as, uh, there's not as much bass response in this. Part of that is down to the pickups, but I also think part of that is down to the construction of the Les Paul versus the Wide Sky. When you say immediate, do you mean like the response of it? Yeah, I mean like when I'm picking a note or playing a chord, especially if I'm digging in, this has a little bit faster response to it. This feels a little bit more, it's almost like there's a compressor on this, just just kind of grabbing the transient of your notes a little bit. And um, I wouldn't say there's more sustain out of the notes or anything like that. It just feels a little bit softer with what I'm hearing in the room. Now again, part of that is probably down to pickups and electronics. Both of these have 50s wiring. Both of them have Bumblebee capacitors in them. The pickups are obviously different, but I do think it comes down to the construction, having a semi-hollow construction versus the solid body, I think really does do something. Also, the top on this is really, really thick. If you compare this to like the top on my 335, you can see in the F hole here, like that maple top is, God, half an inch, three quarters of an inch thick right here. It doesn't feel like a Les Paul. It, it's kind of its own thing, and that's what I like about this guitar. And then if you get up close and you, you look at the details, the fit and finish, I mean, Patch's build quality is just amazing. I mean, like the neck joint is super solid. Uh, and, and I have traveled with this guitar. It has been in, in the back of hot trailers. It has been under airplanes. It has been with me on the road and uh, it's super stable. So yeah, for those of you that have been asking, that's what this guitar is, a Wide Sky P125C cutaway. He does a non-cutaway version as well. 
Uh, and if you're interested, I'll have links to Patch's website and everything down below. Again, I'm not making any money from this. Patch did build me this guitar, but this is not a sponsored post. I'm not earning a commission or anything off of that. I just really like what he does. And I've gotten to know him over the last couple of years and he's a really, really sweet guy. And um, he's really into like modular synthesis and, and all kinds of really cool stuff. He's got an interesting story. And I think he's a cool builder that uh, deserves the, the support. So if you're interested in something like this, I'll have his link to his website down below. It's just a great, a great instrument. And I'm really lucky to have it. And I feel very fortunate to have it. So thank you, Patch. And uh, thank you guys for watching. This is the second channel. If there's uh, other guitars or other gear or anything that you see over on the main channel that you're more curious about and you want to see kind of a deep dive video on, let me know in the comments section down below. Subscribe here to the second channel if you like this kind of stuff. And don't forget to download the free Fretboard Fundamentals ebook in the description box. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.